Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I found in my travels. Today, it is Short Story Tuesday, so I wanted to focus on uh, an unusual short story that I came across uh, today. Uh, one that is about an unusual hospital visit. I am referring to The Hospital Story by Janet Mitchell, which was published in 2009 in her short story collection, The Creepy Girl and Other Stories. I managed to acquire this from my local library. Not a big fan of it, um, but um, I, I will say don't forget to patronize your local libraries. They might have interesting short story collections, as I tend to find. Um, and they might also have weird, bizarre, you know, things like this, which aren't to my fancy, but might be to yours. I'm not really sure. Uh, but for those who don't know, Janet Mitchell is, I think, an American writer. Uh, she, uh, she only has one thing to her name, uh, and that is this. Uh, I, I've also found some uh, uh, trivia books about the NBA and other things, uh, cookbooks um, that have been attributed to a Janet Mitchell. I don't know if it's the same Janet Mitchell or um, if, if there's just different people named that who have been writing. Um, it could be the same, but it's very hard to find anything because Janet Mitchell, um, I've only managed to find her LinkedIn. <laughs> I haven't found a Twitter account or uh, like a personal um a personal uh, website or anything like that uh, to talk uh, talk about her books or any interviews that that she may have had, uh, and I don't know if that's a sign that uh, you know she wasn't cut out as a writer or if she's just a very private person and doesn't talk about herself. Maybe this is like just the one book that she wanted to write and she went back to doing whatever it is that that she does. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, since I don't have any other information about her out there, uh, without further ado, let's talk about the hospital story. I will re uh, do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So the hospital story focuses on an unnamed narrator uh, thinking about their mother as she uh, as she prepares to get brain surgery of a, of a type. Uh, and the the narrator we, we we see initially like they're having very strange thoughts. They're thinking about their mother that their mother might die, uh, but that the mother has promised not to uh, not to die until they um, like they like they until they've seen each other, which is weird. Uh, the narrator is talk is getting a bit obsessive with their thoughts about their mother, and they're also focusing on hair of all things. Just just really bizarre out of place thoughts, which um, if I had to guess, uh, it's told in a manner that like the narrator might be uh, have an intellectual disability, might be like mental retardation as they once called it, um, but it, it, it's not exactly clarified uh, what exactly the deal the narrator's um, problem is. However, they're they're eventually they're they're able to fly uh, fly back home uh, and are picked up by their family and they go to the hospital. And as they're watching their mother in the hospital hooked up to tubes, the narrator kisses their mother. And she cries out in pain. Um, again, I don't know why she's crying out in pain. It's not not really clear. But the nurses show up and uh, pr uh, go about uh, trying to help the mother out in some sort of way. And the narrator and their friends all go back to a person called Frederick place they all seem to be related but it's a bit unclear what exactly those those relationships are uh, but um, the they, they all seem pretty casual about the whole thing uh, and the the narrator goes to a bedroom and sleeps with the child um, I don't know if that's supposed to be sexual assault or something uh, it's a bit unclear there uh, and as the story comes to a close the narrator notes that the mother has woken up the next day and is very lively and enthusiastic um, and ready to eat and the and the nurses and whatnot say that um, she'll be on her feet and ready to leave the hospital in no time but the narrator notes that the mother dies soon after and that's where the story ends in terms of analysis, shrug, question mark, what? I don't really have a lot to, to talk about because this story is very short. Uh, but also there's not a lot of themes going on. Like it's, it just seems like Janet Mitchell is talking about 
horror or something like that. Uh, but that's like there's not a whole lot worth of substance to uh, to grab onto, I, I would say. And mostly my my question, or mostly I just have questions about the hospital story. Specifically, what's going on with the narrator in, in this story? Uh, they, they seem to be acting very unusually uh, in a way that nobody normally acts. You could say it might be grief for the fact that their mother is going to die. But they, you know, in general, their, their behavior seems out of the norm and unusual, even for someone who is feeling grief, kind of obsessed and focused on their mother in a way that would suggest that maybe the narrator isn't uh, um, like a child or like a like the child of this mother person, but it could be like a Mike Pence thing where, where the narrator calls their wife mother for some reason. I don't, I, I'm not 100% cer certain, but there's a lot of weird thoughts going on in all of this. Allow me to read you a quote from this. And besides, there was our pact. She wasn't going to die until she saw me. Frederick picked me up, my brother. He was at the baggage claim, all hair and hands in his pockets. Hair. And that's just a really weird thing to, to think about. You know, like the, saying that your mother isn't going to die until she sees you, that's that's a bit weird. Uh, why would you make that pact with somebody? Like, and, and are you are you going to kill your mother? Are, are you like is are you some sort of specter of death? I'm I, again it's 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 a bit unclear. And why are why are they why are you saying that like your brother's all hair and pockets? What what does that even mean? Hair. Why are you focused on hair? It, it none of that makes any sense and uh like in a way that it could work out, but it leaves me with a lot of questions and it, it's not quite clear what exactly is, is progressing. Uh, in this story, like what is the the plot? What is the the point A to point B to point C kind of thing? Uh, and I, especially if you can't latch onto any characters, there doesn't really seem to be a lot of substance here beyond the the the, the writer Janet in this case just listing stuff that's happening without any connector, without any explanation for why all of this is happening. And my next question is like, is this about sexual assault? Like, did they? Are they obsessively focused on their mother because at one point they might have sexually assaulted them or they might have been sexually assaulted by them because as we see later in the story they uh, there's a person or a child named Pai Pai who the narrator uh, like gets in bed with is that just for comfort for the child is that comfort for them are they having are, are they having sex with this child? It's 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 not clear. Um, and there is there are cases of sexual assault in in other uh, stories in this in this collection. Uh, but Janet Janet Mitchell really seems to be too casual about it. Like it just happens and she moves on. She doesn't linger. She doesn't really stay on anything. She just progresses through the story uh, without. Um, without providing us with anything to really think about. Like, it's just, hey, it happens, that's it, goodbye. And uh, especially for something like sexual assault, you think you would, would linger a little bit and have us think about it and make it more impactful than, than she's probably made it here. But again, because she's being so vague with all of these stories, uh, you, you can't know that that's actually happening. You're, you're kind of led there and uh, like competent, authors like they competent writers like lead their lead the audience to the point without fully saying it but here she's leading us in the vicinity kind of like what i said with neil gaiman uh where he's gesturing towards the outline of a story and saying see that's that's what i mean and uh but neil gaiman is, is a lot better at that whereas here it's not even the outline of the story it's just uh, a series of words that she's pointing to and saying, I hope this this means something. And that really brings me to my next point is maybe there is greater horror and ambiguity. Um, that the, uh, the, the best thing that I can say about this is maybe it's purposely vague in order to, uh, to really push the limits of what horror can be. That maybe in, in giving us the details and leading us to that point is it kind of takes some element of the horror away. And there's some element to be said from uh, you know, not really knowing the full case of the story, but knowing like the character's thoughts and, and some of the events that are happening there. Like, why are those events happening there? Is there some greater supernatural force at play? Is is the narrator in the story some kind of monster who's who's preying on his mother and other other characters? Um, again, it's it's a bit unclear, but there could be an element of horror there. Of course, 
that that it makes it really hard to get into if you do that and the fact that uh, uh, Janet has not written anything since then leads me to believe that other people felt the same way that uh, they read this and were like this what does this mean this is weird and bizarre and it doesn't quite make any sense and um, it would seem that maybe a lot of people do prefer some substance and uh, some tangible uh, cause and effect kind of thing rather than simply point uh, just towards that outline so I do think there that this kind of horror can work uh, but when you fill the entire book this way and and are vague and um, and as short and as kind of brief as possible it, it doesn't help anything so ultimately I, I'd say th this structure that she's using doesn't work out here anyway those are my thoughts on the hospital story by Janet Mitchell a pretty unfortunately bad book uh, I do not recommend it for you out there uh, it's one of the the, the weirdest and and also um, least you know, solid short stories that I've read for this channel, uh, which again is is unfortunate. Um, but sometimes when you do check out books at random from your local library, uh, as is the case with all the short stories that I get from my library, sometimes you're bound to find a few stinkers in addition to the the, the high quality ones that I've already cataloged on this channel. So yeah, unfortunately, this is going to be not a recommend for me. And it, I hope I hope Janet Mitchell ended up doing something better out there than than writing, because it doesn't appear that writing of is her is her forte or anything like that but um yeah i wouldn't really know too much about this person because you know they 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 strive for that privacy in their life if you if you read this before you simply want to comment on something i said here do so below let's have a discussion about the hospital story otherwise don't forget to like share and subscribe and potentially join the discord if you want to uh learn a little bit more about uh um, you know, short stories like, like this one or even better ones. But until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and hospitally travels. Farewell.